Governor Granholm is in our home state of Michigan. Senator Thune is in South Dakota with us inside the Beltway, inside the studio. Governor Barber and Governor Rendell in a place where they're not often here. Uh, welcome to both of you. I want to start this morning uh, with something the president said on Friday when he visited a uh, conference of House Republicans and told them that all the tough talk in the partisan rhetoric uh, is making it harder for the two sides to work together. Listen to what he said. I mean, we've got to be careful about what we say about each other sometimes because it boxes us in in ways that makes it difficult for us to work together because our constituents start believing us. They don't know sometimes this is just politics, what you guys, you know, uh, or folks on my side do sometimes. Um, so just a tone of civility instead of slash and burn would be helpful. Well, Governor Barber, what do you say to that? Well, of course, that's right. Uh, we should be civil. Ed and I disagree a lot, but always civilly and try to do it productively. But it's often the president who is the person that says the people on the other side are bad. Anybody who's not for what I'm for, they've got bad motives. They're representing bad people. The truth is, this is about policy. And the American people and the Republicans think most of the policy that the Obama administration, the Democrat majorities have pushed are way too far to the left and are bad policy for the country. But should we disagree agreeably? Yes, sir. But that doesn't mean we ought to take bad policy that's bad for the future. Well, Governor Rendell, how would you respond? To well, that? I, I think Haley's right about the tone, but it, it's more than just the tone. It is a, a, about policy. And if you look at uh, President Bush when he took over in 2001, his major domestic initiatives, Bob, No Child Left Behind, tax cuts, uh, the uh, senior farm, a pharmacy program, got significant Democratic support. I mean, a ton of Democratic votes. We've seen stonewalling by the Republicans. President in his State of the Union and on Friday, carved out on jobs, on energy, and on uh, holding down federal spending, carved out basic Republican principles. The ball's in their court now on policy. Let's see what they do. Well, for sure, the president made it clear uh, in both his State of the Union and in his uh, presentation to the Republicans right. on Friday that the number one priority now is jobs. And the reason why uh, is certainly obvious to everybody at here at this table and uh, out there uh, outside the Beltway. The latest figures, unemployment nationally is still over or 10 percent and a lot worse in some places. In Governor Granholm's state of Michigan, for example, it's now 14.6%. So Governor uh, Granholm, I wanna ask you, were you glad to see the president put the focus on jobs rather than on health care? Well, health care is a jobs issue too, but for us, I can tell you, if you sit around the coffee tables of Michigan, jobs are the alpha and the omega. It is the beginning and the end. And so the real focus on direct direct em emphasis on job creation is critical. And let me just say quickly, um, you know, this issue of policy and all of that, if you ask people whether they're in Pennsylvania or Mississippi or South Dakota, what their priority is, if you have to ask them, is it jobs or the deficit? I think they'd say both are important. The deficit's important, but jobs are urgent. And that's the way we feel in Michigan. The number one thing must be job creation. Of course the deficit has to be handled, but if you have to triage, put your first effort in creating jobs. Do you agree with that, Senator Thune? I do, Bob. I think that the problem that we've run into, and I, I credit the President for uh, going up and visiting with the House Republicans and the House Republicans for inviting him. I think that both uh, benefit from that exchange. The question is, will there be meaningful cooperation on an agenda going forward? And I think what we've seen with regard to jobs, everybody talks about jobs, but the best thing that we could do with respect to jobs is put that massive health care expansion on the shelf, work on measures that actually do reduce health care costs for small businesses, make it clear to small businesses that we're not going to raise their taxes in the middle, middle of a recession. Many of the proposals the administration has put forward are jobs killers. They have taken an agenda to the left. And I think what you saw in Massachusetts and in, in Virginia and New Jersey was the American people saying, we don't like this hard shift to the left. We want to see the two sides work together, but in a way, on an agenda that it ac actually does help create jobs and doesn't create all this economic uncertainty let for me, small businesses. Let me just ask you this, Senator Thune. Do you think the election of a Republican, uh, Scott Brown, uh, does that make it harder 
to reach compromise now because after all people are saying he is the 41st senator now he can you know republicans now have the ability to block anything do you think they will be more likely to block things i think a lot of it has to do bob with with what things they put forward if they come again to the middle and their agenda is one that uh, you can get uh, bipartisan support for uh, i don't care whether it's 40 or 41 what we were reacting to, a lot of Republicans in Congress, is to an agenda that we thought took the country way to the left. Hey, Bob, and and in, fact, in fact, small businesses will tell you that. They want an agenda that is conducive to job creation, not one that creates the kind of economic uncertainty that kills jobs. And that's what we've seen from the administration. All right. uh, let me uh, get uh, Governor Rendell. He wants uh, I'd to like respond. to ask Senator Thune a question, specifically on the jobs bill that uh, President Obama has proposed, which has uh, tax credits, uh, uh, and uh, small capital gains exemptions for small businesses, money for infrastructure, uh, money for community banks to loan out to small businesses. Uh, are you ready to support those basic principles? I mean, those sound like Republican principles to me, John. Those are things, Governor, that are. We'd like to see broad-based tax relief on income rates and cap gains and dividends and those sorts of things. And we would like to have seen that in the first stimulus bill. So you I think, think there would be, I think there would be Republican support if you were to redirect some of the stimulus bill, much of which hasn't been spent, towards small business tax relief. I think it'll be hard to get sm uh, Republican support for some of those initiatives if they propose using the TARP fund to pay for it. That is not what TARP was intended to do, and that is what we understand to be their proposal. See, John, I think that's the weakness of your position. Everyone's for a jobs bill, but nobody wants to pay for it. Governor Granholm is right. Right now, we need a jobs bill, and you guys in Washington should pass it in the next four weeks. You know, it's interesting. Uh, the American people have been saying from the day Barack Obama got sworn in, Jobs is the biggest issue in the country, getting our economy back, going is the biggest issue in the country. But for the last eight months, all they've heard about is the Democratic Party trying to ram health care down the country's throat. Now, I am glad for this epiphany that Scott Brown caused about jobs. I mean, we should have been focused on jobs in June, not health care. In September, not health care. Christmas Eve, not health care. Uh, as a wise person told me the other day, the only Democrat who... Uh, took any time off before Christmas was Martha Coakley. And what, what happened, they were trying to drive health care reform down the country's throat that the country didn't want. Now the question is, is this the old left-wing playbook of fake up the middle and run far left? I hope not. But if it's moderate stuff, I know Republican governors will support it and support it publicly. Well, let's see what uh, Jennifer uh, Granholm is saying out there, because I see her shaking her head way out there in Michigan. Well, the reason why I'm shaking my head is obviously the first thing the Obama administration did was to put a huge stimulus package, which was focused on jobs, on the table. A third of that was tax cuts. And in Michigan, I can just tell you, just in the past two quarters, it's meant 42,000 jobs. I think you got to give this thing a chance to work. But we know that when he came into office, they were losing 700,000 jobs per month. As he said on Friday before the Republican caucus, he can't be blamed for what had happened before. His wasn't the TARP agenda. That wasn't his bill. But give it a chance to work. And now we see over 3 million jobs being created by the stimulus. And just quickly, one of the things that's unique to Michigan and maybe to some other states who have our problem with the loss of manufacturing jobs, what he has done is given us hope to transform and diversify. We're getting the ability now to have an auto industry that produces electric vehicles with batteries that will propel those. Well, those batteries, instead of being made in Asia, are going to be made in the United States by U.S. workers. For us, that's a huge opportunity, not just to put people back to work, but to transform our economy as well. Let me, uh, uh, let me just shift slightly here and go back to something that all of you have mentioned, and that was this election of uh, Scott Brown. Uh, what do you think that means for Republicans, Senator Barber? After all, this is not uh, a re Mississippi-style Republican that got elected. He's fairly liberal on some issues. Well, he's a very, very much a moderate Republican, and I think it's a reminder to Republicans that, that we don't need purity. Uh, we need to elect the best people we can elect, and Scott Brown is a is the best senator for Massachusetts. But you're right, he's certainly not as conservative as I am, and that's healthy and good. What does it mean? I think, I hope what it means is since the Democrats can't get 60 votes on a partisan basis in the Senate, they will quit trying to ram stuff down the country's throat on a 60 vote partisan vote. 
I hope that's what it means. If it does, it really will not only have been a volcano in terms of politics, it will have been really good for public policy in America. What do you think, Governor Rendell? Well, we'll see. I think the president did a real good job, both in the State of the Union and on Friday, in saying to the Republican Party, okay, here are core Republican principles on jobs, on energy, on fiscal restraint. Now let's see if we're going to work together or we're going to make this year just an election year political fiasco. And Bob, what was most discouraging about Friday is after the invitation, after the president laid out these olive branches on nuclear power, offshore drilling, in 30 minutes, the Republicans put out a press release ripping the president, the House Republican caucus. That's not the way to get things done. Uh, let me ask all of you, and I'll start with you, Senator uh, Thune. Uh, this whole business of anger out in the country, uh, of uh, that we see the Tea Party business and all of that, are those of us here in Washington, have we overestimated that? Uh, it, are we making more of it than it is? Uh, what, what do you make of it? And I'd like to hear from Senator, I mean, Governor Granholm as well. I think, Bob, that listen, if you're listening to the people in New Jersey, Virginia, and Massachusetts, that angst out there is real. And coming back to what Massachusetts was about, I think there are different interpretations of that. The administration says, well, we just need to retool our message. I think the message was, we want to change directions. Uh, this thing is moving too fast toward more government. It was a, a referendum on health care. It was about debt. And you know, Governor Rendell mentioned a jobs bill that's paid for out of TARP. TARP is what it is. It's just more borrowing authority. People in this country are uncomfortable with the borrowing, the spending, and the taxing, and the growth of government in Washington, and that's being reflected in the Tea Party movement, and it's, it was reflected, I think, in those uh, elections in those three states. Do you have any uh, Tea Party people out in your state, uh, Governor Granholm? Oh, sure. I'm going to give my state of the state on Wednesday. They've already got a permit for their protest. But honestly, there, it, there's no doubt that the anger is real and it's white hot and it's especially hot in places that have a hugely high unemployment rate. But it's hot because of the jobs issue. It's not so much hot because of deficits. Again, if you ask people to rank what's most important to their lives, it's having a job. Yes, the deficit's important, but having a job is much more important. Governor? Barbara? Well, I do think that jobs it is the most important thing. And as I say, I think a lot of people got angrier and angrier because they felt like Washington was focused on but, other things. Well, you're talking about uh, too much emphasis on purity. It, I take it you're not too happy about these Tea Party folks. No, actually, I am. I, I, they remind me of the Perot people in the early 90s who were disgusted with both parties. And our party's given people some things to be disgusted with, particularly in areas of spending and deficits. I see these people as a catalyst for Republicans to get settled where they need to be, and I also see them as our allies. I think uh, we as Republicans need to make sure they understand that we see them as our allies, that they're welcome in our party, and that's what Republicans are doing and certainly should be doing everywhere in the United States with these Tea Party folks who are good folks. I'll give uh, Governor Rendell the last word here. What do you think? Is this anger overstated? No, I don't think it's overstated, but I agree with Governor Granholm. I think any time you've got an economy like ours, and it may be the worst since the Great Depression, people are going to be angry, and that anger is going to be targeted to the people who are in. So uh, I would say respectfully to Senator Thune, the guy who's sitting there and has been unemployed for eight months, he thanks President Obama for extending the unemployment benefits and stimulus. That's something you don't hear so much about stimulus, but he wants to know where his job's coming from, not what the deficit's going to be.